Coming up tonight, the park fire rages on, burning over 400,000 acres. But as evacuation orders lift, we find out how residents are reacting to coming back home. Your local news starts now. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us for the North States News at 11. We're glad to have you with us and we're hoping that you're enjoying your weekend so far. I'm Sophia Brunsma. We start tonight with the park fire, currently the largest fire in the country and the fourth largest wildfire in California state history. According to Cal Fire, the park fire is now over 400,000 acres, destroying almost 600 structures. Cal Fire saying the blaze is extremely active as a result of the hot and dry weather. Unfortunately, hot temperatures are expected through Sunday. The park fire is now 28% contained. Officials with Cal Fire said today they will continue to contain the blaze, but there are still challenges ahead. So Antelope Creek to Little Antelope Creek uh, is where we've been uh, having challenges basically because the, the heat in there of all the down fuels, uh, the topography. So crews are in there diligently mopping up so that as we get the warmer, hotter, drier uh, days, some wind that we don't have anything blow out of there ember wise and cause any uh, additional spot fires for us. According to Cal Fire officials, including Section Chief Brunton, crews have made significant improvements and recovery efforts are underway. This includes introducing specialized teams to get rid of hazardous materials. Some evacuation orders were downgraded today in Shasta and Tehama counties. In Tehama, areas still under evacuation orders are highlighted in red, and that includes Tehama Wildlife Area and several zones northeast of the fire's perimeter. Meanwhile, north in Shasta County, all evacuation orders have been lifted south of Highway 44 in Shingletown. Some zones north of that now under normal status. There are still evacuation warnings highlighted in yellow just north of the Tehama County border. If you live in these areas, make sure to be prepared to leave in case fire activity increases. And earlier today, a majority of zones in Butte County were downgraded to evacuation warnings. Here's a current map. The yellow sections highlight the evacuation warnings and yesterday most of this map was actually just split between evacuation orders and warnings. Now evacuation orders remain for a few zones in the Cohasset Ridge area. Orders extend upward following Highway 32 and goes through the northwestern portions of Butte Meadows. And we're going to turn to the weather right now with a live look at Highway 44 in Redding, just outside of our station. First alert forecaster Sarah McCoy is in the Weather Center tonight, and she's been tracking the latest. Hey, Sarah. That's right, Sophia. More moisture definitely moved in, and it's all moving out now. And luckily, all of that lightning that we saw today is moving out with it. So we did get a little bit of rainfall. Not all of it evaporated at a higher level, so that's good to see. And with that lightning moved out, that means we have no more red flag warnings for any areas in the North States. So those have all lifted now. And then moving forward, sorry, my clicker is just taking a second. Let's get into these overnight lows as well. We've got some 70s there for the Valley areas with lots of 60s all across the North State. And then some more mid 50s continuing, but Willows tonight at 69. Now the relative humidity is dropping going into tomorrow evening. This changes rapidly though, so we're not going to be as humid as what we were today. So that's getting a little bit lighter going into tomorrow. Then our area winds are definitely very calm going into the overnight hours. But moving forward, you're going to see how they pick up tomorrow evening. Not too bad, not too many major gusts, but a variable breeze throughout the evening. Back to you, Sophia. Thank you, Sara. Continuing our coverage on the park fire, volunteers with nonprofit team Rubicon helped one Forest Ranch family get closure after they lost their homes in both the campfire and the park fire. The North States News' Hannah Gutierrez takes us to the property to see the aftermath of the blaze. Team Rubicon is helping one family sift through the ashes of what's left of their home after the park fire tore through their Forest Ranch community, a tragedy they know all too well. So the two fires and experiences were were quite a bit different uh, in a personal level, and this one far more tragic. 
Rick Perot, his wife, and two cats found their silver lining in Forest Ranch after losing their home in the 2018 campfire. Nearly six years later, the family is reliving the same nightmare. Sometimes the fires have a different thought in mind and a different power. Team Rubicon, a veteran-led nonprofit, serves communities when disaster strikes. Volunteers came from far and wide to help Perot find anything salvageable on his property. I don't think anything matches that, seeing that kind of uh, relief off of someone who's gone through something as traumatic as this. The team sifted through ashes to find family heirlooms and jewelry, but most importantly to Perot, his cat, Mandu. Sadly, but at least closure that they did find that he wasn't fast enough to, to get out, though. Perot says the family did everything they could to save their home from another disaster, looking towards the challenge of rebuilding their home or saying goodbye. Here we're trying to hold on to the fact that we had five wonderful years of seeing sunsets, 365 days. Despite skies of gray and loss of the life they've rebuilt, Perot remains optimistic and thankful to Team Rubicon for closure he needed during this tragic time. Where the fire found our weakness and, uh, and took our home and took our kitty. Yeah, I even have my Art of Optimism shirt here. Uh, life is good, but now life is. Maybe that's the... And still trying to be uh, resilient. That's a wonderful kind of... Doesn't sound like a gift in some ways, so... In Forest Ranch, Hanny Gutierrez, North States News. A local assistance center is set to open in Butte County on Monday to provide recent fire survivors access to resources to aid in their recovery. The center will stay open for two weeks at the old 99 cent store location on Pillsbury Road in Chico. Survivors of the park, Thompson and Apache fires are eligible for assistance at the site. Agencies available will include the Butte County Building Department, United Policy Holders and American Red Cross who say they're ready to aid survivors with multiple services. Fire kit is basically um, a, a safety mask cleaning supplies if you go back into your property and want to either clean it up or check it out. We will have um, mental health volunteers if you just want to talk and vent, obviously, because this is a time where there's, you know, again, people are under a lot of stress and they have stories to tell. The Assistance Center will be open from 9 in the morning to 5 in the evening, Monday through Friday. Another center will open for residents in Tehama County on August 15th. That center will be located at the Red Bluff Community Center on South Jackson Street. More information can be found on our website, krcrtv.com. And coming up next, the emotional stories from fire victims following Shingletown and Manton evacuations. That's up next.